Welcome to this tutorial on using the new Band in a Box for Mac DAW plugin in Digital Performer. With Band in a Box 2019 for Mac, we've introduced a plugin that accesses all of the real tracks, real drums, and other content in Band in a Box, but can be used right inside your favorite DAW. The plugin comes free with the purchase of Band in a Box, and the plugin installs when you install the main program. In this video, we're going to have a look at the various ways you can use this amazing plugin in Digital Performer. If you use a different DAW, we have other videos that demonstrate it in many other DAWs such as Pro Tools, GarageBand, Reaper, Ableton Live, and many more. First, we'll look at an easy way to get started with the plugin. We'll also go through some of the settings within the plugin, then we'll look at the different ways you can use the plugin that utilize the unique features in Digital Performer. And throughout the video, I'm going to try and use a variety of Band in a Box styles so you'll get a sense of the different genres, grooves, and tempos we cover. Whether you're into jazz, rock, country, soul, or any styles you can think of, there's something for you in Band in a Box. Right now, we're listening to some great blues tracks playing in Digital Performer that we created with the plugin. Everything that you're hearing right now in Digital Performer was created by the Band in a Box plugin simply by typing in these chords, and you can enter any chords in any key. Then we picked this blue style and generated the tracks. I'm going to go back in time a little bit to show you in detail how we got these great sounding tracks. We're going to start with a blank Digital Performer project. From the welcome screen, I'll select the empty option and click on new to create a new project. Next, you will be asked to name your project and select a folder where it will reside. Okay, so we now have an empty digital performer project. In this program, you can select a plugin while you're creating an instrument track. So we'll create a track and load the plugin at the same time. I'll navigate to project, add track, instrument track, PG Music Inc, Bound in a Box AU plugin. This is the Bound in a Box plugin. I'll make it a little bigger so it's easier to see. Here we have a blank chord chart. This area here is for the different instruments in the style, and is currently blank because we don't have a style loaded. Here's where you can pick a style. Here you can set various song parameters such as the key, time signature, etc. And there's a spot for a song title, and various menus we'll look at later. In order to get our tracks, we need to pick a style and enter some chords. I'll enter a chord progression first. I'll do it in the key of E minor and I'll enter a basic minor blues chord progression that is 12 bars long. I think that's good. I'll change some of the song parameters. I'll make the end bar 12, and I'll change choruses to 3, so this entire thing will play 3 times. Now we can select a style, either by clicking in the Select a Style area, or by going to the Select menu and picking Select a Style. So here is the list of all of the Bound in a Box styles available and you can see there's over 6,000 to choose from. You can just double click on any style in the list to hear a sample of what it will sound like. For example, I could filter by rock styles and sort them by heaviness and listen to a few. or I could filter by funk and listen to some of those. or jazz styles.
or maybe some modern synthesizer styles. Okay, back to our project. We need to find a blues style, so let's view all of the styles again and filter them by blues. Now we'll listen to a few styles. and I especially like this blue style with the Brenton Mason guitar solo. You'll notice that in this column it shows the ideal tempo of the style, which for this one is 130 beats per minute. That does not mean you have to use it at that tempo, but if it's somewhat close to that, you'll get the best results. And I'll pick a tempo maybe a tiny bit slower than that sample we heard in the style picker, 125 beats per minute. And I'll set that in the plugin as well. When you first add the plugin, it takes the tempo from the DAW, but since we just changed it in the DAW, I need to change it in the plugin as well. We're ready to generate the parts, and there are some custom generation options in this menu, but right now I just want all the tracks generated normally, so I'll press the top Generate button. It's creating the tracks now. Notice that there are some green squares and a blue square in this area, and those squares are empty. When the tracks are ready, those squares will be filled in. The generation takes a little while, so we'll skip ahead in the video. So now it's finished, and the squares are filled with waveform icons, meaning they're ready to drag into the DAW. Before we do that, we can sample these tracks by pressing play up here. and we can now drag them into the DAW, which can be done individually or as a group. Here I'll show you just dragging in the bass by itself, but I'll undo that so I can show you importing them as a group by dragging the blue icon. And now we have these tracks right in our DAW, and during playback, the chord chart also highlights the currently playing bar. This is a great feature if you want to record your own tracks over top of this. So you can now mix the tracks, add effects, or anything we like. And, as with all real tracks and real drums, these are real instruments played by real musicians. These are not individually sampled notes, these are actual performances by some of the top studio musicians in the world, able to play over any chord progression in any key you enter. I'll do a few similar, but quicker examples like this, with a few different styles, so you can get a sense of the variety available in the Band in a Box plugin. Here I'm typing in some chords like I did before, but this time I'll pick a hard rock style, setting the tempo and generating the tracks, 
Now I'm dragging them in. And I've got some great hard rock tracks in my project. Here I'm typing in some chords and I'm picking a train beat country style and generating the tracks. Now I'm dragging them in and I've got some great country tracks in my project. In addition to typing in the chords, you can open Bound in a Box files. Either files you've created right in the Bound in a Box app, or files other people have sent you, or even the demos that come with Bound in a Box. I'm going to open the Style Picker and load a song demo for one of my favorite jazz styles. The features are nine part big band crooner horn section. So now we have the entire thing entered for us the chord progression, key, form, etc. And because I loaded a song, the plugin has started to automatically generate the tracks. Now I'll drag them in. And here's a great jazz style with a big band horn section. And of course, in addition to opening Band in a Box files, you can also save anything you enter here as a Band in a Box file as well. I'll go to File Open to open the demo for a modern funk style. And here it is playing. Let's load up the plugin again and check out some of the settings within the plugin. In the rendering section of the preferences, there are various options for your renders. For the master mix, you can choose to render as a flat mix, a dry mix, and a center panned mix. On the right, you can choose options like normalizing, acidizing, and padding for multi riffs. The multi riff padding puts blank space on either side of the audio. You can also choose to allow multi riffs to start early or end late, notify when generation is complete, and auto generate songs. The last feature auto generates all of your tracks when you load a song instead of waiting for you to click on generate. This area allows you to specify band in a box program, real tracks, real drums, and saved track locations. In our case, we'll leave the values that are automatically set. There is likely no reason this would need to be changed, but if we were pointing to an incorrect folder, it would appear red and pressing find folders would set it correctly automatically. At the bottom of the preferences, you'll find DAW settings, where you can change the host DAW. This is set automatically and should be correct already, but you can change it if it's wrong. You can also choose whether you would like bar highlighting in the chord sheet. What I'm going to do next is create a song with a smooth jazz groove. I'll start by generating a style, but then I'm going to start adding more tracks, which will include some MIDI and a solo that will use the multi riff feature. So here I am typing in a chord progression in B flat major. And like before, now I'll load a style. And I'm going to choose a smooth jazz style called Moon Dog. This style uses funky swing acoustic piano with several smooth jazz instruments. I'll generate the tracks. And I'll drag them in. And let's listen to a bit. Now you'll notice in the plugin there are green and blue squares for audio tracks. On the other side, there are also orange squares with little eighth notes in them. This means that for these tracks, there is also a MIDI transcription available. Digital Performer has a quick scribe window that displays notation based on the MIDI data from a track, so we'll use that feature to display base notation from MIDI data in the Band in a Box plugin. First, We'll drag from the orange square on the bass track to the tracks window in Digital Performer. You will be asked if you would like to merge the conductor track from the MIDI data with the existing conductor track, and you can select the Merge option. 
Now we can double click on one of these MIDI blocks to edit the MIDI. I'll hold down the Option and A keys to select all of the notes. Then I'll right click and go to Transpose. I'll change the second transpose value to C4, so it transposes up an octave. Then I'll press the Apply button. Now all I need to do is select the MIDI track in the Tracks window and switch to the Quickscribe window. As you can see, we have a bass transcription here with the correct key signature. We transpose the MIDI up an octave because bass notation appears an octave higher than concert pitch. I want to add an additional drum beat to this with a loop. Like everything else in Bound in a Box, when trying to find the right instrument in part, just double click to sample. I think this one will work really well. So now I'll generate just that loop. I'll drag it in. And that sounds pretty cool. I think I want a saxophone solo for the first eight bars. I'll find the right sax solo in the real tracks picker. I could generate the solo once, but I want even more options available to me. So I'm going to use the multi riff feature to generate seven different tracks of the same saxophone soloist. So I can then choose the solo that I like the best. I'll filter the real tracks by sax solo SW16 and find something around the same tempo. This soprano sax is a little slower at 75 beats per minute, but it's still close enough to our project tempo of 85 to sound great, so I'll choose it. Now I'm going to select the first eight bars of the chord chart because I only want to generate the multi-riff solo for the first eight bars of the song. I'll also take a moment to show you how the different tracks are laid out within the plugin, now that we have tracks of various types loaded in the song. There are three main sections accessible with the scroll wheel. On top we have the style tracks, that is all of the tracks that are specifically loaded with that moon dog style. Then in the middle we have the special tracks, and we have that one special loops track. Additional individually picked real tracks, real drums, etc. would go here as well. And then the bottom section is the multi riff, which is what we just picked. And now we'll generate the multi riffs for the region that we selected in the chord chart. And I'll drag them in. So now we have seven of the same soloists, but playing different parts on all seven of those tracks. If we tried to play them together, it would sound pretty bad. But the idea is that we can listen to them individually and either pick the one we like the best or piece together phrases from each of them. So I'll listen to these tracks one at a time by soloing them with the other instruments playing in the background. I think I like this one the best, so I'll remove the other ones. And let's listen to the whole arrangement.
Digital Performer has a clips view that is great for live performance. So I'd like to show you how to use the Band in a Box plugin for live performance in the final section of this video. In this example, we will use Band in a Box instruments to create a live composition that allows you to switch between chords whenever you want. Once the song is done, you can simply switch to the ending. I'll open the Band in a Box plugin, which is currently loaded to the first track, and I'll load a soul style called Dawning. Next, I'm going to adjust the ending bar to 4 and the chorus is to 1. Now let's enter a C chord in the chord sheet at bar 1 and hit the generate button. The tracks are done now. I'll quickly set the DAW's tempo to 100 so it matches our tracks and I'm going to drag them from the blue square to the tracks window just to create some audio tracks. After the tracks are created, I'm actually going to remove the audio from those tracks. Now let's go to the clips view. You will see that the tracks are side by side like they are in a mixer, instead of in a stack. For each track, you can load multiple audio files. Each row is referred to as a scene. I'm going to hold the shift key and drag from the blue rectangle to the first row or scene in the clips view. This will spread the audio files out over several tracks. Now we just need to repeat that process for a few more chords. I'll replace the C chord at bar 1 with an A minor chord, generate, and drop the audio files onto a new row by holding the shift key. And now I'll do the same with F. And then G. No song is complete without an ending. The ending audio that we need is already in our audio tracks in scene 1, so we'll just copy and paste those to a new scene. Ok, so we're done with the Bound in a Box plugin for now. We're going to label our rows or scenes and make some quick edits in Digital Performer, and then we'll be ready for our live performance. First, I'll name the rows based on the chords that they use. C chord, A minor chord, F chord, G chord, and C ending. In order to get the clips to loop properly, we need to change some of the parameters. We can do this by double clicking on the audio clip that we wish to edit. I'll set the start parameter to bar 3 and the end parameter to bar 7. This should automatically set the duration to 16 beats, which is 4 bars. I'll do this for all of the clips that we wish to loop, that is all of the clips except for the ones in the ending. Now it's time to edit the ending audio files. First of all, change the start bar to 7, because that's when the ending starts in our audio files. Finally, let's disable looping, because we don't want the ending to play more than once. Under Now Playing, we'll change the setting to one measure so that the minimum duration of a scene is one measure instead of four. What we have created is a very powerful live performance tool. Simply click on the play button beside C chord to start playback of that chord with all instruments. It will loop for as long as you want. Then try switching to an A minor chord and it will do so right on the beat. Now try F. Then G. Then, when you're done, click on the ending to end the song. You can play the chords in any order you want for as long as you want.
you can even remove instruments to change the arrangement. Or start with a bass and bring the other instruments in. This concludes the tutorial on using the Band in a Box DAW AU plugin with Digital Performer. If you want any more information about the plugin, please go to www.pgmusic.com and navigate to support Mac plugin. Have fun! Thank you.